So, you want to be an influencer? Do you have the skills to get that job done? Stay tuned. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. And we are on the second segment of a series that I'm producing of 28 vital skills that you have to possess to be a success. And we went over the first four the last time. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend you go see it. We're going to pick it up with skill number five right here and right now. Skill number five, if you want to be successful, you have to know how to be a leader. If you want to be an influencer, you have to know how to be a leader. What does that encompass? Well, first of all, you have to have a vision. You have to have something that people are going for. As the coach of a basketball team or the manager of a baseball team, or as the Attorney General of the United States. What is your vision? What is your vision? What is your plan? Well, as a, as a coach, you want your team to win. That's the vision that you're planting. As the Attorney General, you're going to have justice in the land. Depending upon what your position is, if you're a, a priest, a minister, a rabbi, what is your vision? What is the vision that you're getting out there? You people. If you want to be a leader, you've got to get your people to embrace the vision. Now, you don't always have to be the one that comes up with the vision, but you have to be the one that is constantly selling the vision. Share the vision, sell the dream. Share the vision, sell the dream. Those are essential parts to being a leader. Now, leadership is a really huge subject, and I've got many, many videos on that. I just want to touch upon a few points. The most important one, though, is to have a vision. Second step, of course, is to always lead by example. And guess what? When you're the leader, when you're the recognized leader, you're leading by example, whether you're doing it on purpose or whether you're not. So the point is, if people see that you're industrious, if they see that you're ambitious, if they see that you're hardworking, if they see that you're willing to go the extra mile, that encourages them to do exactly the same thing. Now, is everybody going to do that? No, but you will get a majority of the people. You're never going to have everybody in the group on board with everything that you want, but you don't need that. What you need is a large majority of people to embrace that vision and to encompass the habits that you're portraying as a leader which are persistence, dedication, the willingness to go that extra mile, leading by example. Very simple. Next one, know how to follow. You can't always be the leader. So one of the things you have to do is be in a position where you're able to follow direction, where you're able to do things that are going to move the compass forward, to get everybody on the same page and go the extra mile. When people see you do that, they look up to you. you before you can become a good leader, you have to understand what it takes to be a good follower. And you have to be in a position where you say to yourself, I'm doing this because I share that vision that we're trying to pursue, that we're trying to accomplish, and I'm going to do my darndest to get us there. And is this step that I'm taking going to move the needle forward? Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Be a good follower because if you ever want to be in a position of leadership, if you ever want to get something done, you have to know how to lead and you have to know how to follow. Now that doesn't mean that you do things blindly. You are allowed to ask questions. You're allowed to say, how come this? How come that? But once a decision has been made, you as a member of that group 
accept the group's decision and become a good follower. Don't be questioning once the activity is in motion what you're doing you've already agreed to that or don't do it walk away that simple but once the decision has been made by the leadership and you agree to being part of that group then you must follow that direction does that make sense next one know when to listen and not talk so many times in life you have situations where people have what they feel to be a crisis it could be a little kid where somebody's picking on them and they come running to you oh he's picking me he hit me he did that or it can be an adult that has the adult version of that same scenario one of the things that you have to learn how to do as a leader as an influencer is to keep your mouth quiet. I know that sounds contradictory but it's really true. You have to give the person that's having the difficulty a chance to get everything off their chest. It does two things. Okay, First, it makes them feel better. When they have said what they have to say, I've been wronged here, I've had this, I've had that, so on and so forth. That's one of the things and it makes a person feel better and also the fact that you're listening to them. All right, That you are respectful enough to listen to what it is they have to say. And the second thing is, and you're going to find this out, a lot of times when people are making their complaint, you know, telling you what's wrong, they will very often give you the solution to their challenge while they're telling you about the challenge. Or it's so obvious what needs to be done when you listen to the challenge that you're in a position, once you let them talk, once you let them finish, it's like the balloon, okay? You got the balloon, you untie it, let all the air get out of the balloon. And then what do you have? You got a little piece of rubber there. All right, it's not taking up any space, it's not... Let the air out of the balloon. And then once the air is out of the balloon, then you are in a position to offer something positive. But you must let the person talk and you must be quiet and not interrupt. Let them get it off their chest. Let them get the energy out that they have. You know, when you... There's an adrenaline flow that happens when you have that anger inside you, when you have that challenge that you have to overcome. Let them get that energy out because if you try and talk to them while they still have that energy inside, that adrenaline inside, they're not going to listen to what you have to say. So, when somebody has, you know, and that happens to me so often, when I'll, I'll hear something where uh, somebody's, you know, I just had a recent conversation with a, with a close friend uh, who's having some issues, a very strong guy having some issues with his wife. They're having some medical challenges, you know. And normally when he and I talk, it's like banter back and forth, a lot of joking, a lot of sports, so on and so forth. But not this time. This time, my job was to keep my mouth shut and keep my ears open and give him the chance to spill it, get it all out, empty the container. And then after the container was empty, you can sympathize, you can empathize, you can offer some suggestions, you can offer some advice depending upon, you know, the position that you have, if you're the mentor and this person's the mentee, you know, in this case, he and I are peers and, you know, so offering advice isn't right but I said I didn't offer advice I said may I make a suggestion to you all right and he said yeah see it's different making a suggestion with a peer than offering advice so you need to know there are certain times when people are especially when they're angry or especially when if you're in a sales situation and people are giving you their objection or people are telling you what 
has made them angry about something or, or something that, you know, I have to have this because, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel incomplete without it. Let them go through and tell you the whole nine yards. Let them spill everything. Then when it's your turn to talk, they will listen. But the point is, let, them, let all the air out of the balloon so that no matter what posture you're going to assume with that person, depending upon your position, you know, mentor, mentee, peer, or, you know, whatever the scenario is, let them get it all off their chest, and then you're in a position where you would be able to offer something positive. And sometimes offering something positive is merely understanding their heartbreak or understanding their challenge and saying, you know, I can see how you feel that way. Maybe we can do something together to make you feel better. But you're not going to get into that position unless you allow that person to empty all the air out of the balloon. And the eighth one that I want to give you, uh, the fourth one today, is know when to walk away. This is especially true, Eli, for people in your age group. Right now you're a teenager, you're, soon you'll be in your 20s, and when you're younger, people tend to want to belong to a group. And not just when you're younger, when people are older they want to belong to a group also. Sometimes you're going to hear things that people are going to say and they're wrong. Or sometimes you're going to be, let's say you're out partying someplace and you know the person that was driving the car has had a little too much to drink. It's very tempting to say, well, he'll be okay or she'll be okay, you know, taking me home, so on and so forth. This is where your judgment comes in. This is how you become an important influencer. It's not just in the things you do, it's also the things that you don't do. Does that make some sense? You're going to have a lot of people say, come on, let's go party, let's go do this, let's go do that, you know. And, you know, you want to be one of the guys, one of the gals, you know, part of the group. But also you have to take a look at your objectives, your burning desires, your ambitions that you want to pursue and say to yourself, is this going to help me to move forward in those ambitions? And if the answer is no, then what you have to say is, you know what, I appreciate the offer, but I really need to get home, I need, I'm not feeling well, whatever, find some reason to walk away. And Eli, I mention this to you now because kids, people that are, you know, teenagers, don't always make the best judgments. And if you are there and you just, well, okay, then you're tacitly agreeing with their judgment and will suffer the same consequences. There's a reason why car insurance companies charge an arm and a leg to people that are under 25. Why is that? Because their judgment is not as good as someone that is, let's say, a senior like me. Now clearly, the reflexes of somebody that's younger, that's under 25, are going to be a whole heck of a lot better than an older person's reflexes. But what's more important than reflexes is judgment. Judgment is the key. And once again, it's not just the things that you agree to do, it's also the things that you disagree and don't do. That is what makes someone successful, is the way they manage their time and the way that they, their judgment leads them in the right direction. One more example of that. A lot of times people, when it, you know, I live in a, uh, an area where there's the cold weather area during the winter, there's snow, there's ice on the road, so on and so forth. And what people will do is they'll go out and they slip on the ice in their car and they get into a car accident. They'll hit another car, they'll hit a tree, they'll do something and they'll get into a car accident 
and then they'll complain and say, yeah, you know, my insurance just went up because I got into a car accident when we had that, that storm the other night. It wasn't my fault. The ice was, yeah, it was your fault because you didn't use good judgment. You didn't plan ahead. I mean, did the weather get you by surprise? And once you see that bad weather, you have to say to yourself, the odds are diminishing as to my safety behind the wheel. And other people that are out there, the same thing. You know, they're, you know, they can slip on the ice and get you. And you say to yourself, well, it wasn't my fault. You know, this guy came and hit me. Yeah, it was your fault. You were out there during a dangerous time to be driving. So once again, you've got to know when to get on board and you've got to know when to walk away. It's a matter of judgment. Vital skill of people that want to be successful, of people that want to be an influencer. All right, we've gone over eight different things. We're going to have some more next time we get together. And remember always, hey, don't ration the passion, fashion the passion. I'm Eli's dad.